Well, it's me again, and this is my podcast, And My World, where I take you along on an adventure where we get to explore everything and anything that goes on in my mind. Oh boy, is it random, is it crazy, it's nuts, it's all over the place. So grab yourself a cup of coffee and let's have a good time. Woohoo, it's morning time again and it's cold outside. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Hello everybody, I'm Graham and this is my world and my podcast. Now, I understand that I have released a bunch of controversial podcasts recently. Uh, And uh, a lot of anger and a lot of frustration and a lot of, you know, that kind of stuff. And you know what? I I, I really kind of want to apologize. I do. But you know what? I'm not gonna. Um... No, I'm not going to apologize because I, uh, I'm an asshole, all right? And uh, I am, yeah, I'm just, I'm an asshole. And I am silly, silly, silly on a completely different track than most people, apparently. And I see things way differently than most people. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, so politics, no more for that for a while, long while. Uh, and instead, we're going to talk about, uh, well, the importance of having a second vehicle when living where you have to drive to work. So, um, ever since high school, so back in high school, I, um, for years, I would just, I only had one car, only one. And uh, multiple times, five or six times, I'd have a car, everything would be great, all of a sudden it breaks down, and then I am in trouble. I don't have any way of getting to work or school or something. And uh, yeah, that's not, 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 not necessarily a good thing. Mm. So I got my uh, keto coffee this morning. Got me some grass-fed butter in it, and some heavy whipping cream, and a little bit of hazelnut uh, ex- or not extract. Uh, uh, what's it called? Hazelnut. Uh, uh, it's not essential oil. It's a yeah, a flavoring. Yeah. So, mmm. Mmm. Ah, I like coffee. Um. So, I have. Um, I've had a second vehicle for a long, long time, um, and sometimes, sometimes even a third vehicle, because I just I don't see how, especially for me, uh, like riding public transportation is one cost effective, uh, especially with having to stand and wait for hours on end sometimes, especially Sundays for a bus, uh, and. Um, Yeah, and then like, you know, wait, you know, trying to get uh, someone to give you a ride and you're bothering them and, and I don't, you know what, I kind of like the ability just to, if I need to go somewhere, I just get in my car and go. Well, I don't buy expensive cars. Uh, You know, I buy cars that have, most of the time, have 100,000 miles on them or, or more. Um, And, uh, because I don't see the point in spending you know, more than say $6,000 for a car. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I have multiple vehicles. Well, my brother, I love my brother so much. He's such a good guy. He's awesome. He wants, he works hard and he tries to provide for his family. He's a great guy, but he only has one vehicle. And, uh, I'd say about a month ago, the transmission in his car broke. Like it went boop. And the car won't even move now. Like, it's bad. Um, And so he's been looking for another vehicle. And he's been driving, you know, dad's truck. Which is fine. But, you know, dad's kind of like I am. It's like, you know, it's my car. Get your own freaking car. (laughs) Putting miles on my truck. (laughs) That's less time I'm going to be able to enjoy it down the road. Um, So... He's, uh, 
he's trying to find another car and I was approached yesterday um, by my dad and because I made the comment about selling my van at some at some point and <clears throat> the more I thought about it the more I was like you know I don't in good conscience I don't know if I could sell my van uh, there's there's work that still needs to be done on it you know um, front end work needs to be done I'm having some sort of issue, I think, with possibly the heater core. Um, it's definitely the coolant system. So either I need to flush the coolant system and maybe that'll fix the problem or, or something. I'm not sure. But um, I just, I told him, I says, you know, I just don't think I could sell it um, and, and feel comfortable about doing it because it's just, there's so much to be done. And he's like, well, you just give it to him then. <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, I still got some money on the dang thing. I I just had electrical work done uh, in the fall, and so I'm, I'm still paying for electrical work, and, and um, I just put brand new brakes on it and that kind of stuff. So I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. Um, you know, and I've had this car, gosh, I've had this car for, oh, I want to say eight years now or something like that. I know everything about it. I know what's going on with it, what's not going on with it. I know everything about it. I've kind of fallen in love with it. It's almost like a family member. And I've, I've had a car, I've had a couple of cars before where I've sold them to friends or family. And it's like a week or two later and they have an accident and totaled the car. And I'm thinking to myself, I sold you a perfectly good car. And if I would have been driving it, you know, that would never have happened, you know, in, in the back of my mind, you know, but, um, I told him, I says, you know, I'll tell you what, if you can cover what I still have left to pay on electrical, sure, you can have it, you know, um, it's helping him out, it's, um, you know, giving my brother a vehicle, I think that, uh, I, I, I think that it would be more cost effective personally, um, for him to go and put a new transmission, uh, in, uh, in his car, but, you know, there's only so much, uh, that you can do when it comes to suggesting things like that, you know, uh, hindsight 2020, you know, I mean, seriously, that's, that's kind of the way it is because I've been in the position where I had money in hand to put a new engine in a car. I had, a, I had a 74 Plymouth Valiant um, back in the day, and I, I paid uh, 500 bucks for it, and I drove it around for about six months, and then all of a sudden, um, the engine started making a, like a, a banging sound. Uh, well, it was one of the lifters is what it was, and uh, eventually it shot the lifter, um, it shot the lifter. And so it blew the, the blew the motor, and so I was looking into having a new engine put in it, and it was like two thousand bucks. And I'm like, oh man. And I didn't want to I didn't want to bite that bullet, you know. That's a lot of money, you know. And I'm like, man, I don't know. Should I just go buy a new car, or should I just get a new engine? And I'll tell you what, I should have got the new engine, because what I did is I took the two thousand dollars and I put it on a freaking Subaru. An 86 Subaru GL10 is what I bought. And I drove it for another year until my ex-girlfriend, girlfriend at the time, uh, took it on a trip. Radiator hose blew. She kept driving it. Came home, parked it in my driveway, in the driveway, and about an hour later says, oh, you should probably check out your car. It was blowing a bunch of smoke and then all of a sudden it stopped. She's like, I think it's fine though. She seized my freaking engine. It was a aluminum block. And that was a $4,000 freaking engine replacement. Ah, oh, so I, I ended up getting rid of both cars. What I should have done is I should have got the straight six and the Plymouth Valiant redone for 2,000 bucks. I'd probably still be driving that car today. Solid, wonderful car. It only had, I think, like 58,000 miles on it. Yeah, no joke. The, uh, the guy I bought it from was the grandson 
of the guy who had it and he bought it brand new and literally only drove it back and forth to church and the grocery store. That was it. It sat in the garage the rest of the time. So, hey, whatever, right? You know, you, you, you live a life, you learn a lesson and then you try to pass the lesson off on someone else and they don't take it. So, I was thinking, well, I know the, the his van's got electrical problems, and I know, because it, it does, and they all do, oh, all electrical vehicles, you know, if it has electric, if it has electric sensors and all that kind of crap, it's going to have electrical problems. I mean, that's, just, duh, they all do. That's just the new problem of the future, you know, uh, you, you don't see a whole lot of the the old cars from the 60s and 70s having electrical problems. Usually it's a mechanical problem, but I mean, it happens, but it's very, very rare. So I'm thinking um, what I might do is in part of the part of the deal, if I, if I end up going that route, is I'll say, you know what? Why don't you give me the title to the other van? And, uh, and I'll take the other van the other car, you take my car, plus give me what I have into this, which is like, I think about 600 bucks. So I walk away from the deal with 600 bucks and a broken van. Then I, what I think I'll do is I'll go down to uh, pull and save, which is our local, um, parts, um, what do you call it? Junkyard, basically. I'll say, okay, well, this is the vehicle I have. I need a new transaxle for it. Um, how much are you gonna charge me? <laughs> it'll probably be like, I don't know, 150 bucks, 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Put a new one in it. Hey, look, now I've got a van that's driving. <laughs> oh, with electrical problems. But actually, um, be honest with you, I was thinking about selling this anyways, because um, later on in the year, probably around June or July, I was thinking about buying myself a, another vehicle anyways, and I already have too many. And so um, I was thinking, well, <clears throat> I really kind of had, ever since about high school, I've really kind of had my eye on getting a hold of a a mid 1960s uh, Volkswagen Bug. I just think they are so awesome. I've been talking to a few people that have Volkswagen Bugs, and two people have come up and said yes, they would love to sell their vehicle. Um, one guy, he's got a, it's got a, what is it, 1968. Um, Volkswagen Bug. It's got the moonroof or the sunroof. It's a, it's a solid sunroof, so it's a moonroof basically. Um, but it is in shambles. It was his son's car. His son bought it when his son was in high school with the idea that he wanted to fix it up and work on it and um, rebuild it. Well, the engine is sitting in the passenger seat. <laughs> All four tires are flat. And the looks like the body uh, has a ton of rust, which is a pain in the butt, but it can be uh, fixed. You know, it's not the end of the world. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And then um, there's that. And, and they wanted uh, 350 bucks for it. So I'm thinking, all right, cool. I could do 350 You know, it's a project car, but I could do 350 Then I ran into another guy. Um, actually, two two days later, because I I have I've got my eye out for these things. I really want an old school classic Volkswagen. He has a yellow one. It's a 1967 uh, Volkswagen, and he said that he wants to look into selling his. Um, and it's got uh, 77,000 miles on it. Now, I don't know if it's rolled over or not, but it's 77,000 miles. He is the second owner, and everything on it is original, and it's been in a garage its entire life. And um, But he wants 4,500. It is in excellent condition. 
excellent condition and it also has the sunroof so I'm like oh man so I'm thinking for less than five thousand dollars I could have me two Volkswagen bucks one I drive around right now and I can be able to use as an everyday vehicle which they get fantastic gas mileage by the way um, and just drive around all the time and it's my everyday vehicle back and forth to work yada 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 well the other one uh, becomes a project car and uh, strip it all the way down to the the, um, the body take the fenders off and everything and start working on body work and getting it all lined up and cleaned up and in shape and rebuild the engine and the transmission and yeah drive it around when it's done and paint it out um, dark green and it would be my it will eventually be my everyday driver is the plan well the yellow one will I'll drive now as an everyday driver but later down the road probably end up selling um, or just holding on to and I can switch them out or have two identical bugs which they literally are identical um, uh, I think there is I think there is um, one's an eight, uh, one's a, a 68 and one's a 67 but I think that's okay um, but yeah, like I said, less than 5000 bucks, and you walk or walk away with two Volkswagens? I think that's a good deal. So <clears throat> I, um, I'm really kind of sitting on that one. I'm like, you know, I think I, think I want to. Well, I, I talked to the wife about the idea, and she's like, oh, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Volkswagen is not a good company to buy from. And I'm thinking, what? What are you thinking? What? Why? She's like, oh, well, the emissions, you know, they, they lied on the emissions. And, and then she said something about putting people in gas chambers and killing them with, uh, and I'm just like, are you, are you getting history mixed up here or something? I mean, I understand that, uh, you know, Hitler had a lot to do with the Volkswagen company and stuff, and it was his way of basically giving cars to the masses and all that. I, I, I understand that. But, uh, you know, time to move on. <laughs> um, yeah, these are they're good cars. They're cute cars. I understand they have history behind them, but, um, yeah. And then, <laughs> then she's like, yeah, but, you know, it, it's really not your, your style because it, it's just way too, uh, too flamboyant. We, you know, just, it screams gay. <laughs> just thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> She's just kind of pulling, pulling these dumbass excuses out of each, each orifice as she possibly can. Just like, ah! Uh, <clears throat> so, I don't know. Um, but I like the idea of having an old car. And a, and a Volkswagen is great because you can still get the parts for them and they're still very, very inexpensive. So, mm. my coffee's getting cold and so is my feet. Oh, gotta get some, some heat on my feet. <laughs> so, anyways, that's kind of where I was at, what I was thinking. And that's the direction I'd like to go. My uh, <coughs> my brother, you know, he really needs a car right now, and this one is available. I guess I just I don't know. I've got some mixed feelings about it. You know, he's definitely not easy on cars. He's he's a very he's very hard on cars, and this one this one is very temperamental. She she has a lot of attitude and uh, doesn't always. Uh, doesn't always get to do what you want her to do. You know, she's, she's pretty picky. She's pretty, um, she's full of attitude. Let's just put it that way, you know? So, anyways, I'm coming up here on the end of my show today. I, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to my, my podcasts. Um, stick to, stick with me here pretty soon. We're going to start getting back into the garden and doing more gardening stuff. So I'm here, I'm alive. I'm trying to give you feedback or give you content. So, all right, y'all have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. This has been a Graham's World broadcast brought to you directly from 
Graham's mind. So stay tuned because there's more to come.